So welcome to this special double episode of VW's, the people's favourite for over eight decades, coupled with a visit to a top specialist to view his collection and get a rare insight into VW ownership. I can't thank you enough for all your support and watching over the last year, and how important it is to like and subscribe if you haven't already to help sustain this channel and make sure you never miss an episode. Now this week we're going to focus on a VW camper van I previously owned. Now when I acquired it, it didn't quite look like this. It was covered in an inch of dust and all its tyres were flat. It was a non-runner and the rear brakes were locked up due to being laid off for a couple of years. I freed them off, adjusted them and before going through the engine, I replaced the distributor cap, the rotor arm and the points as well as the condenser. I also replaced the fuel lines removed the carburetor to find it was completely gummed up with dirty fuel which had turned to varnish. I started to take it apart and rebuild it, but just a spot of luck I found a brand new old stock one on eBay. So rather than spend a couple of days rebuilding this one, I just decided to replace like for like. Along with a new coil, brand new ignition leads and a new fan belt. Next was the fuel pump. Now even though this looked brand new, I decided to replace it and I'm so glad I did. This was absolutely shot along with its Bakelite stem or pedestal as it's called, which had split into little pieces. I measured and examined the cam for wear, which was good, and fitted all the new bits. But the most important thing of all, believe it or not, are the valve clearances or tappets. These need to be checked and adjusted every 3,000 miles. If these are neglected, the car will simply not run. So it's just a case of setting the car at top dead centre with the rotor arm pointing to number one cylinder and then work your way through each one setting to 0 0.006 of an inch. So turning the engine anti-clockwise and starting with the number one cylinder, you can work your way through the firing order, turning the engine, as I say, anti-clockwise as you go. Loosen the nut first and then with the screwdriver, just turn the screw anti-clockwise or clockwise to loosen or tighten the gap. Get your feeler gauge in at 0 0.006 of an inch. And when you've got a nice sliding fit and you're happy with it, then put the screwdriver back in, hold the screw in place and tighten the nut around it. Double check it when you've done that, just in case it's moved. And then you move on to the next one and so on and so on. Now these rocker cover gaskets take a lot of stick because it gets pretty hot down there and they just tend to split and go really brittle. So when you fit in the new ones, a nice smear of grease, back on they go and then you're guaranteed they're going to seal properly. And after fitting a new set of spark plugs, I tam the engine in to 10 degrees before top dead centre. I just found at this setting, it was just about right and the engine run lovely and sweet. When you look inside the cockpit, you can see how clean this van actually is. I did a couple of little modifications though. I resprayed the black steering wheel in white, just to match the orange and white, and it just kind of made the cockpit look that little bit lighter. But the major one was putting electronic power steering on the van which for me just completely transformed the whole drive. Now just take a look at this. This is the chassis number stamped into a suspension strut or should I say painted onto the suspension strut at the factory. Now this normally washes off within the first couple of months of the van being used from you. But look at this, it's still there, it's still readable, which just goes to show how clean this van actually was. And when it was all done, I had a really nice summer with the family with the van before moving it on to its current owner. And I must apologize for the lack of videos and the lack of detail in its restoration. I accidentally lost two years worth of videos because I wiped my phone clean and gave it to my youngest daughter. But as a special treat, I'm gonna revisit the van with its current owner and show you some really special VWs into the bargain. Luke Theakari caught the bug for VWs after seeing the love bug aged 10 at the local cinema. 
Based in Hanwell, West London, and previously an aluminium car body manufacturer since 1935, the garage had some former famous customers such as Sir Sterling Moss, who commissioned them to build the bodies for his Grand Prix race cars. Luke purchased the property and formed Terry's Beatles in 1986, a revered top VW specialist, hey. which he now runs with his son Luke. Here he is. He's in Luke. Hello, Gary. Good to see you, mate. How are you? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? <laughs> well, that's a nice bit of world. That looks very nice. Look at that. So, eh? what have you done to this? New sills, isn't it? Yeah, new in and out of sills, wheel arch bottoms. We've got to change the belly pans, front wheel arches, door skins. This is a well used van, this, isn't it? Um, so what, you've just cobbed this little bit up here? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've just plodded it up, yeah. yeah. I've plodded it up over the rust hole. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's what you've got to do, isn't it? Oh, we've, oh we've you've put a nice bit of steel in there, I can feel it. We've, we've welded a repair piece in. Yeah. A little bit of filler before we uh, start carving it up and, you know, getting the shape. That's a nice old beetle, isn't it? Used to be a rallycross beetle. Belongs to our windscreen fitter man, Bill. That's like brand new underneath, isn't it? We restored the chassis on it, another garage did the bodywork, and now it's back to us to get it finished off. Yeah. It's got Porsche brakes, Porsche engine. It's, it's a little, little bit car. special, that, isn't it? A little bit special. I'm just looking at the floors, they look like straight out the rocket. Thank you. Do you do that, yeah? <laughs> I do good work, yeah. mate. I'll give you that. Unusual colour, that as well, isn't it? Anthracite grey, yeah. And that's the original colour? Early 60s colour. That's a 63 car. Yeah. Original colour. Do you know what? I don't mind these little thin wheels as well. <laughs> no, I know people put the wider wheels on, but actually, I think it's part of the character. Look at them floors. That's incredible. It's better than new, isn't it? I'm sure they didn't come out the factory like this. Well, we, cha we changed the floor pans. Yeah. And what's this poor suspension, Luke? Uprated shock absorbers, uprated front anti-roll bar, Porsche brakes. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're getting there. It's very, very difficult when, for example, you've got seized wheel cylinder nipples. You can't undo them. You don't have them in stock because you're a VW garage, not yeah. a Porsche. Yeah. So you have to wait. Yeah, wait for the part. Yeah. You know, Paul Newman used to run one of these with a Porsche engine, super Porsche engine in the back. That was, that was a convertible. Was it, yeah? Was it not a red convertible it, that it he might, had? It might well have been, yeah. But he used to drive it because police wouldn't go out. That looks like a fast car, mm. but he could outrun anything, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a decent racing driver cool. as well, Paul Newman. Yeah, yeah. He nearly won the man's. Age 57. Wow. Which is incredible, isn't it? Because, you know, by then wow. your reflexes are starting to go a bit and that. Yeah, but at that sort of age, you have a little nap halfway through, don't you? Well, you do, yeah. <laughs> um, but he outdid McQueen, didn't he? I know they used to say McQueen was the ultimate, you know, mm. motorbike and, and racing driver, you know, for an actor, but I think Paul Newman quietly outdid him, you saw. Mm. Um, you got a few in here. Are these all yours? Yeah. I've had this car since 1989. Yeah. And um, I picked up my my uh, wife for our first date in this car. It's got a nice memory. She's passed away now, but I've still got the car. Yeah, you've got to keep hold of this. Yeah, one day I'm going to restore it again. I sold it. We sold it a, a long time ago to finance a house move. Yeah. But my son turned 18, he was looking for parts for his car on eBay, and he saw the advert for it, so we, we bought it back. Nice. But it's a little bit, has sentimental value. And it's a calm and convertible, yeah. Wow. Calm and convertible. Now what's going on with the steering wheel, Lowly? Don't you like the steering wheel? And this steering wheel is actually a very rare one. It's a very rare accessory yeah. wheel. I'll tell you what steering wheel I do like. Last time I was in here, you had one on the wall up there. I had like, you know, like the Morris Minor spokes on what? it. And what? you didn't know what it was off. <laughs> so, is it the... That's the one, yeah, the cream one there. The creamy one. Yeah. That's a Petri 50s accessory steering wheel. You see those in a period Mercedes, VW. Depends what spline it has. And, you know, it has different applications. Yeah, it's lovely, that. Piece of art. And what else have we got up here? Other carbon convertible. That's a Java Green 67. Yeah. Quite a rare car, especially right hand drive. I love the VW key. It's got like the VW it, cut yeah. out of it, hasn't it? See, this particular model is the last year 
or the last eight months of having the sloping headlights. This particular car was actually built in December 66, but it's the last year of having the sloping headlight. Yeah. Coupled with a 1500 engine, still six volt. Really? But because it's got the 1500 engine, VW put disc brakes on the front. So it's got flat hub caps, four bolt wheels. Very rare car. Yeah, they look smaller than wheels. I'm sure it's just me. Because they always look quite big and chunky, I think. They look like bigger wheels. Maybe it's the hub caps on this one behind us here. Yeah, this one's a 56. Yeah. Yeah, higher profile. But that's got cross plies on it, which are always a little bit higher. They'll go bang. Don't drive out in that. It's happened to me. <laughs> I was in a 220 SE convertible I did up, and because it had the original cross plies on, I left them on, and I did a full restoration on it. Mm. But it looked great at shows having the original crosses yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. I was on the motorway doing 80, and bang, the front headlight flew out, Luke. Went mm. past me, I ducked, I wow. had the hood down. And it literally put a, a dint of size of football in the wing. Yeah. Oh, wow. A bit deceiving, this car. It's done 43,000 kilometres from oh, you. This is one for me. But this the dashboard's the never been painted. So I've had this car since 1984. Uh, yeah. And and this hasn't been touched. It's still got the original rubber mats. Yeah, yeah. I've got new carpets for it. Oh, just the mats in. That's the way they were meant to be, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but I've had it so long, I, I need to do it right. What's the headline on like in it? Oh, that I'll need doing as well. I might just clean up. But uh, I've got a friend who does very nice uh, trim work and he's going to replace that for oh, me. Oh, it's an oval? Yeah, it's an oval. Now, didn't some of them... I was reading that some people, uh, when they were a split oval at the back, some of them cut the split out. Yeah. And just kept it like one piece of glass. It was a conversion that you were offered, so the more glass that you have, yeah. the better visibility you have. It's a safer car. So from a split rear window beetle, you could actually get a, a large rectangular window fitted. Yeah. So visibility is better. Yeah, shame, isn't it? Well, it is a shame now, but back then it was a desirable thing. Can you look at this convertible over there? That looks like a nice one. Oh, go on then. This is more up my street. This one's a, a 1957 model convertible, Carmen. Yeah. Um, very, very standard car. Just with lower suspension, disc brakes all round, and the, the Porsche Fuchs alloys. And that's the steering wheel we were talking about before, isn't it? That's an accessory one. That's the banjo wheel. So is that like the one that's that hanging on your wall, or is that slightly different? Because that's made in Germany in the 50s. This one's about a year old from Japan. So that's the yeah, uh, that's Sun and Moon Born Push. Yeah, and it's got My the Fuchs wheels on. So was this yours? Yeah, it's one of our sales cars. How much? It's 57,750. It looks a little bit different to your regular engine. It's brand new, isn't it? It's been built to look like um, a period of Crasser engine. But also with different fan housing and so on. Spot on, yeah. It's more modern, which allows you to drive the car at more sensible speeds. Yeah. They always have that little oil drift there, don't they? This, this one, has this one got one as well? Yeah. There yeah. you go, see? It's a proper Volkswagen. Yeah. That's a completely different setup. Like you say, it's got a special engine in. So the van that you got off uh, me a couple of years ago, isn't yeah, it? In terms of differences, it's got a twin carburetors with an external oil filter. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the linkages for the twin carbs, but essentially, it's the same sort of engine. Yeah. Just the tin wear's slightly different, to obviously, so you can fit it in the Beetle rather than in the van. They're pretty simple, aren't they? Yeah. That's why I can fix them. If they were hard, I wouldn't be able to fix them. No, you would. You'd be able to fix anything, mate. I love, I love the way these close as well. I love this noise. It's a lovely boot there, isn't it? That hood's perfect mm -hmm. as well, isn't it? What would you, would you call that mohair? Sonnenland. Sonnenland, It's yeah. a German high-quality material that they use on Mercedes, BMWs, yeah. Yeah. Porsche. Uh, this is the more modern version, obviously, but this is I prefer that. I think it's just the lines are much nicer. I prefer driving this one. It's a little bit more powerful. So what was this originally? Was it, that's a Porsche engine in it, isn't it? It's a Porsche-style cooling system on a flat four Beetle engine. But this one's 2332cc. So was this originally a 1303 or something, or 1303S? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, my first car was one of these, obviously not a convertible. Yeah. I think it was a 72 or something like that. Hmm. And it was um, like a, a similar colour to that, a bit darker metallic blue. 
and it had uh, chrome wolf alloys on it. Yeah. And I thought it was the bee's knees. Mm -hmm. Wolf know. race. Oh, wolf that, race wheel. I was, I was the wheel in it, and I kept it for about six or seven years, and it was yeah. great. And it stays no. slightly open, so that, open yeah? so that the cooling fan sucks cold air from behind the car. Yeah. I preferred these, Luke, because you've got the chunky back lights and there's a slight curve in the windscreen here. Yeah. That curve screen is just, just lovely. And some people are the total opposite. They prefer the flat screen cars. Yeah. So anyway, Luke, this is the one we've come to see. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. It's been at home in the garage. Let's have a look at this. Exactly the same. And this has got like, isn't there oil in this? I remember. Yes, yeah, an old oil field, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I put a new carburetor on it, didn't I? I love them. I love the character of them, the way they drive. You know, sometimes it's difficult to select the gears, the noise of that engine. It's just, yeah, but, it's just but, but beautiful, isn't that. it? <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, a few things surprise me. They're pretty simple, aren't they? But they won't run if you don't do like the tappets. Yeah. You can't start, you know, little things like that. They just, they're very, they're not temperamental, but if you don't do the basics on them, mm. they won't perform properly, they won't, you know. Yeah, but you know when they're, when they're working inefficiently, you know something needs doing. Yeah. So you, you know when it's time to adjust the valve clearances, the points cap, the timing. Yeah. Well, I did all that and you checked them and you went spot on, 10, spot on, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you probably took it away and rebuilt it. Yeah. But, but this is the sort of vehicle that we buy to restore and sell. So I'm afraid that's it for part one, but be sure to tune in for the second helping where I reconnect with my old van. Listen to that. Meet the real life Herbie. Wow. Check out the rest of Luke's collection. And hear those priceless stories. So I looked around and it was Jetson Button. <laughs>